always go there. Lay down. Hello, hello, my friends. Hello, hello. Lori here from Unique in the Creek. Long time no see, my friends. Long time no see. Hello. Say hello when you come in so I know who's joining me this fine morning. Today is going to be a very fun live. I hope. If not, I'm going to make it fun. <laughs> oh, I see lots of people jumping on. Hello, hello. Um, I am going to do um, a scarecrow today. Uh, we're, we're calling it UITC Scarecrow 2022. Uh, since I started Unique in the Creek, I've always made a scarecrow. I've always made a snowman and I've always made a Santa Claus. So I am, um, we're going to do this scarecrow a little differently. Right now it is available in a kit. I had a ton of kits. There was lots of kits posted yesterday. And uh, I believe there still is some available. So if you do like it when I'm done, hopefully when I'm done, there'll be still some left. But as we know, our kits sell out really fast. And that's a great thing because, you, you know, I put a lot of thought into every single kit, okay? And I feel... Everything is always about the little details, okay? Just the little details make a big difference. Um, for instance, we have some new oval signs. Guys, these are so fabulous. You can use them on a round board, but you can also use them on the oval board. Um, I will play with one probably this weekend. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys the actual signs themselves so you can see how vibrant the colors are. Um, so this, and I apologize, I don't know what number any of these are, but if you go onto uniqueinthecreek.com and just type in oval in the search, all of these will come up, okay? Um, now, I had to show this one first because this is Dave's. Dave absolutely loves, loves this one. He even said, oh, maybe I should do a, a, make a wreath with this one. And I'm like, live question mark? <laughs> so we'll see. But isn't this one fabulous? It's got little birds on it. We got the whole pumpkin thing going on, leaves. This is a perfect fall um, oval. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you for joining me this morning or this afternoon or at lunch. This one is my favorite. I love the blues. I guess I can bring this out a bit. Um, I absolutely love the blues and the yellows in this. And we all know uh, this year that um, they would be great on a yardstick swag. Hmm. They would be great on a on a swag, maybe not a yardstick one. Maybe I can help you guys out with that one. <laughs> very, very soon, I could probably help you out with that one. Anyways, <laughs> this one is my favorite. The blues in it is fabulous. We all know blue is a, a hot color this year. Um, this one is Mitchell and his girlfriend Danielle's favorite. It's fall, y'all. I don't know why it's their favorite because we don't say y'all here, but who cares, right? Maybe we should start. It does make sense when you say the word y'all. <laughs> um, like I was saying, everything um, is in the little details. With the oval signs, you will get two cable mounts and two pipe cleaners, okay? So um, you can, if you want, a lot of people punch holes in their signs, um, you can, if you have a hole punch, you can definitely punch holes in your signs, or you can use, we give you the option that you can use uh, cable mounts. So if you use cable mounts, you can mount your sign 
on either sign or you can mount your sign on top or bottom. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. We got you covered in that. That's what I'm saying. It's all in the little details. And I don't know if you guys notice that when we send out our signs, we send out our signs in Ziploc bags. They're not actually Ziploc bags. We get them from Uline. However, we do this because these bags are reusable. Okay, so I hope everybody, I know I've never actually said that to anybody um, because I just figured people would collect them and, and use them for other things. But this is, uh, now these bags are a little more pricier than what other people use for their signs. However, I have this big thing, especially since being in Alaska, I'm really being conscious about what's going on with the whole climate control and all that stuff. So please, if you get your, when you get your signs, save the bag as well. You can use it for anything. It's a great size bag, right? You can, you know, wrap your lunch meat in and then put it in a bag and put it in the fridge. But this is why we use Ziploc bags, okay? And we don't use the thin cellophane ones. Just wanted to say that. Um, this is the welcome. Got a few bees, They're really, really cute. This one's is very popular with the sunflowers. Gotta have a few little Halloween ones. Fresh picked pumpkins. This one's really cute as well. Hello fall with the welcome. And we got all the fall goodies. This one is already super popular. Poor Janie in our sign department. <laughs> Uh, they are on the website right now, the, the ovals. Uh, they are 7 by 12, okay, 7 by 12. Now, you'll get an oval board, and it's like, oh, these are too small for the oval board. Keep in mind that once you put your mesh and everything on, they won't be too small. So, like I said, I will be using a oval sign hopefully sometime this weekend. You know, I, I've been having problems trying to find time to go live since coming back. I've been kind of bombarded with work. You guys all know that, you know, when you get back from a vacation, it's like, oh, so much to do. Anyways, look how beautiful that one is. Um, these uh, ovals, I don't even know how much they are. I, I'm sorry. I just put them on the website. I didn't even check how much they were. <laughs> okay, we got some winter blessings with a snowman. This one's super cute. Let it snow with some snowmans. Gotta have a gnome. Welcome fall. Very cute. Super cute. We kept them kind of basic that would, you know, it would fancy anybody's um, uh, creativity or creative way. We got something, a little bit of something for everybody. Um, Pumpkin wishes and sunflower kisses, really cute. The sunflower border. No, I did not reveal the new board yet. Um, we're having just a few issues on the pricing of it. So as soon as we got that worked out, they're already being made. Okay, they're already being made. So they will be ready for sale as soon as I unveil them. Okay, so... There's a thing, there's an order of things that we have to do before, you know, we reveal anything to you guys and get totally bombarded. So <laughs> uh, this one's super cute. Vintage North Pole Candy Cane Company. I love this one. This one is super popular in the oval or in the round as well. This one, Warm Winter Wishes. Now you don't have to use it just on the oval. You can use it on the round. You can use it, you can pretty much use it on any of the boards. Well, except for the rail, but, and the character. But <laughs> we have most of these available in vinyls anyways. So warm winter wishes. And this one, we I did one, one opposite way because I think this one's going to be very popular as well. Using the oval the other way or even on a round ring that you can put this in the center. Peace on earth. Very pretty. Colors are so nice and vibrant. Okay, so that is the start of our collection of ovals. Um, so I'm gonna see how they, how they sell. 
because I'm not going to, if they're not selling the greatest, I'm not going to make a ton of uh, different designs. So I will be um, keeping an eye on the sales. I know yesterday we already had over a hundred of the ovals ordered. So I think they may be a hit. Now I noticed that a lot of people are making um, large scarecrows, large snowmen, and they are so stinking cute that I had to. I had to make some 12 inch sign faces because um, I can't remember who made the first oval scarecrow I saw, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And that is when I decided that I needed to have 12 inch face signs for people that you can use on the oval. Okay, so these are just a couple. They are 12 inch metal, okay? You will get two cable mounts and two pipe cleaners. However, just like the oval, you can punch a hole in either one. Depends, it, it depends how you like to do it, okay? So I just brought two, but we have a whole, I think there's 10 different faces um, for the 12 inch. Scarecrow, Santa, Mrs. Claus, um, snowman, a witch, um, a ginger boy, a ginger girl. So go check it out. They're under the 12 inch signs. And I just, I think I called them 12 inch sign faces. Okay. So there you go. If you want to make bigger, bigger cute things like I'm going to make today, you can make them bigger on the oval board. All right. So that is my PSA on the, um, the signs. I hope you guys like them. And keep in mind, these are made in-house. So they're not like, if it says WS before the SKU, that means WS is a, just an acronym for us. That is an in-house sign. So our sign girl makes them. So it's not like if, you know, if we get slammed, you know, if you ordered a uh, in-house resign, your order may not go out the next day. It may, it may take a couple days. Um, same with the vinyls. The vinyls are made in-house. Uh, we try, you know, we have almost 2,000 vinyls. We try to keep every vinyl stocked up so we don't have to wait and print them. But sometimes, you know, um, we it, it just the orders come in so fast that, you know, we deplete our thing and we have to make them as you guys order them. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So let's get started. Like I said at the beginning, uh, this is the scarecrow is a kit. Now I'll probably crop out when I'm editing this video. I'm probably going to crop out that portion because people watch the video and then they are trying to order the kit. Meanwhile, they watch the video, you know, you know, three months after the kit was revealed and then they're messaging us, where is the kit? Where can we buy the kit? Yes, they will fit on the character board. Yeah, you can glue them with E6000 if you'd like, but the same faces are available in vinyls. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, if you're gonna use a character board, do the cheaper version and buy the vinyl. You're gonna see how I do it today with the vinyl. Um, you know, it's more economical that way. Uh, we did make the 12 inch for um, the oval because a lot of people are making, they want bigger ones and they are so, so cute. I have to make one. All right. So with this kit, you do get a character board. Now we do take the vinyls to the board so the and upside down, so the vinyl itself doesn't get scratched in shipping and it doesn't bend or crease on the face. All right, so here's my scarecrow face. There's the character board. Okay, uh, we are using a poly jute mesh. So you do get a whole roll of poly jute mesh. You get the ever so popular scarecrow hat that's kind of hard to find in stores these days. 
however, Lori stockpiled from last year and doesn't know how to open the bag. See, these are the bags I was talking about for the signs. A lot of sign people use this bag, which is like a cellophane thing bag. And they rip and everything, and they're great, but like I said, you have to throw this in the garbage now. When I send out the Ziploc bag, you can reuse that Ziploc bag. So that's why I like it. Um, here's the hat, super cute. Um, you're gonna get a whole roll of this. This is so pretty, I love this. This is going to go so perfectly with our Scarecrow. You also get a roll of one and a half inch orange. We are only using a little bit of this ribbon, so you pretty much will have a whole roll of this left to use on another project. So you can order, you, you can order and make your own Scarecrow hat because we don't have any of these on the website. They were all in the kits. However, you can order the poly jute separately. You can order the vinyl, the character board. Um, you will have you know, th lots of this left over if you do it the way I'm going to do it today. So you can make a couple more scarecrows and just make your own hat. They're, they're not hard. It's just felt. It's just felt, my friends, with a little bit of stuffing. So we're all creative. We all can probably make one really quick. I may even make one on a live. So you get the um, zip ties. You get a pipe cleaner because I am going to be making a bow with mine. And you also get the unique in the creek, uh, unique in the creek squeegee. Everybody needs one of these. <laughs> okay, so I have already cut my mesh, and I do not recommend. Hear me out clearly. I do not recommend you cutting your mesh before putting on your vinyl. Don't do like Lori, <laughs> but I wanted to pre-cut my mesh so you guys aren't sitting here watching me do mesh. But uh, Poly Jute is strands of burlap in it, okay? It has strands of burlap. And this is one wreath that we're actually going to need or want um, some fray at the end. So you can see, hopefully you can see all this fibrous stuff on it because there is burlap in it. When you cut it, you are going to get all these jute fibers all over your craft room, all floating up in the air and everything. So um, heed my warning because I did it this morning and my whole mat was pieces of little jute. And I'm gonna hopefully not have any little pieces of jute floating around when I put my vinyl on, okay? So put your vinyl on first and then cut your mesh, okay? Just, just a good FYI, and that's probably for anything because it, it, it does make a little bit of a mess. Okay, so the character board. You got two holes up at the top where it says row one, row two. Um, these are divoted holes. These are your hanging holes. Um, and then we have uh, 16 holes going around. Okay. We are going to put our vinyl image right in the center on this um, solid piece right here. I'm going to use a little bit of water. And this helps me um, if I need to reposition my vinyl. Okay. And this is a really good way and a more economical make, way to make your wreath frame and your sign all one piece, okay? So you're gonna just flick up the edge here and peel off your vinyl. This is now garbage, okay? And what you're gonna do is we're gonna put the vinyl just on the inside of the last holes that are towards the solid part. Now, I just eyeball this. So I just kind of look at it and it's like, oh, I'm, what I'm trying to do is line up this set of holes right between the hanging holes. This is the actual middle. 
So I'd like my eyes and the nose to go right in the middle. And as you can probably see, it's off. So what I mean about repositioning with the water is you have a lot of time. Now it's gonna make me a liar. See, once these, these are really sticky. Oh, there we go. I'm, I'm gonna be able to reposition this because the glue that's used on the vinyls is a water soluble base. So you can use water with it. It's called the wet method. And um, once you squeegee it and it cures for 24 hours, it's on there. So there we go. That looks a little more center. I think I'm okay with it. Alrighty. So now you're gonna take your squeegee and with the black felt part, you're gonna start from the center. And what we're doing is pushing out the water and air and giving it a good solid um, attachment to the board for the glue. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just gonna push out. And you can see the water squirting out and that's good. Like I said, you only need a little bit of water. Don't put a ton on. So I go around, always starting in the center and working my way out. And these are amazing. However, if you don't have one of these, you can use um, a couple credit cards with a piece of paper towel wrapped on the credit cards and push out. Um, you don't want to use just plain plastic. I wouldn't want to use just this side um, because it's going to scratch your vinyl. Okay. If I'm going to show you, pretend these are two credit cards put together. You can put your paper towel over your credit cards and do exactly like I'm doing where you're pushing. And the paper towel is actually collecting the water for you. Uh, but for some reason, this works amazing. The, the, the squeegee tool, it really gets out any of those water and air bubbles. Alrighty, and then we're just gonna go around one more time just to dry up any of the water. And there we go. It is on perfectly, right? So our wreath for frame and our sign are now one piece. So that's pretty easy. And of course, this is reusable for quite a while. <laughs> All right, so now now you can put it aside and now you can cut your mesh and everything because I think I did a pretty good job without getting any of the fibers underneath. So I'm gonna just put this aside. Now we need 16, actually, I'm not gonna put it aside. I'm gonna preload my board because I've already cut my mesh. So you can cut your mesh. What I've done is for Scarecrow 2022, uh, we need 16 pieces. So I, I'm gonna use a whole roll. I'm gonna use the whole roll of this poly jute mesh. So I cut my 16 pieces at 21 inches, okay? And then I'm going to be using three strands of raffia. So you do get, oh, I forgot to show you at the beginning of the kit because I was already using my raffia. You do get a package of raffia and we are going to make this really scarecrow-ish <laughs> with your raffia. So what I meant by three strands is you grab one, two, three, and you pull it out. Of, so don't unknot this because you will have raffia everywhere. You can just pull out what you need from the top of where it's folded over, okay? So we're, I'm gonna use three pieces of raffia per zip tie. Alrighty, so again, 21 inch pieces of mesh, 16 of them, and then I'm gonna be using three strands of raffia per zip tie, 16 of them. Alrighty, so I'm going to preload my board, and I'm only using one set of holes. I'm gonna be using row one hole to row one and a half. Okay, so this would be two, row two. So I'm going from his, this hole to this hole and I'm leaving them open. So I am preloading open. And we're gonna build this scarecrow step by step. 
It's super, super easy. Now you can do it. You do not have to do the scarecrow like I'm doing it. There is many, many other ways. You have a lot of ribbon, so you can add ribbon into each of your um, pieces of uh, jute mesh that we're gonna be using. However, I'm only using my ribbon just for a bow at the bottom. That's all I'm gonna be using it. Uh, previous scarecrows, I've used ribbon, uh, like a sunflower ribbon in every other hole. You can do that and then add the orange to the hole that you didn't have the sunflower. But I'm keeping this simple. I'm keeping it simple because I like simple. And if you guys wouldn't mind floating my bow and sprinkling my page and everything, I would so greatly appreciate it. There is people out there like you that may not even know about Unique in the Creek. Um, and you found me somehow, probably from somebody sharing. Now here, I'm just gonna use one of the hanging holes to the inside. We are fixing this problem. Um, you will soon see that the hanging holes will be a little bit more apart and there will be three holes. Okay, so I've preloaded my board. So our back is gonna continue staying to look like this. All right, it's gonna be nice and neat. And we're ready, we're ready to go. So like I said, I pre-cut my mesh. Just clean this up a bit. And our hat is going to be the last thing we add. So the hat does have, um, it does have wire on the back. However, there's only one side. There's, I thought there was two, two pieces of wire. I'll probably add a pipe cleaner to this side so I can like, attach both sides. I'm not sure if, if this one is just missing one. I'm pretty sure they had both two on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 21 inch piece. Now you see a lot of people um, with their scarecrows, all um, the mesh is all frayed. That mesh is, is kind of expensive believe it or not, frayed mesh. It, it, it's just like this. However, all the, the two ends are frayed. Now, I'm gonna warn you, this does make a little bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna do one piece like this and you guys can do um, this if you want, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 21 inch piece and I am going to cut, this is the, the factory surged edge. I'm just gonna cut just a little bit off like that on the top and on the bottom. And if you want more frayed pieces than I'm making, you can cut your mesh pieces in 10 inches and do two pieces in each zip tie uh, with the frayed edges. So once you cut the two two um, ends off just from the factory edge, you can start pulling some of these plastic uh, strands and it leaves the burlap intact, okay? So you just, that's why I said it kind of makes a mess, but it does make a really nice look. I'm not gonna do this for all mine because I just wanted to show you guys that how you can do it. Now, you, the farther you cut down, the more, the more fray you can do. Okay, so I can keep pulling. I'm gonna cut more down here. So you're gonna do this on both ends. So do not waste your time cutting your this mesh with a heat cutter or a wood cutter wood burner or anything. Okay, so there's one side, and then you'll just do the same to the other side. And yes, it takes time, 
and that's why I'm not going to do the whole wreath like this, but I wanted to show you guys that you can do, make your own. And you don't have to do a lot of it because we're going to put some raffia in as well to give it that scarecrowish look too. So you'll have raffia and the burlap showing. So just keep pulling until you got as much as you would like to have exposed of the the frayed edge, okay? But look at the mess it makes. So again, do this after you put your vinyl on, okay? So I, this is still my 22 inch piece and I want to see this fray, right? I want to see it because I did that on purpose. So I am going to make this wreath with a ruffle curl up because uh, with, when you do it curl up, you're gonna see, see the fray, okay? Yes, embrace the fray, right, Chris? Okay, so I'm just gonna do a ruffle. So I'm just pinching it right down the middle. And it is easier if you have something heavy holding your mesh while you pinch. Alrighty, so you get a little bit of this fray. It also gets in the way. Now you can, which is a bigger job, you can cut the whole um, factory edge off too and make it more frayed. However, I wouldn't recommend that because it'll take A, a lot of time, and B, there's a chance that your mesh may fall apart. So I would just do it like this. Okay, so we have it. Usually I would say, okay, now when you have it like this, put it curl down, but we're gonna use curl up so we can see some of this fray. I'm going to put a clip on this, and then I'm gonna take the three strands of raffia I had. One, two, three. And like I said, pull it right from the center where it's folded on the raffia. Okay, and we're gonna put the three ends together, together, like this. Okay, pull it out. One, two, three. Now, I'm just guessing at three. Um, we'll see how it looks. You may wanna do four or you may wanna do two. We'll see how it looks in the end. So what I did is put the ends together, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and I'm gonna put the middle of it right in the center where I'm going to put my burlap piece, and I'm gonna go around it with um, my zip tie. Now it's just loose right now. I just wanna make sure that each side is the same length. So I'm just kind of bringing it up to make sure it's the same length. And once you have that, pull it tight. Okay. We're gonna, we got the zip tie on. Now this board is going to start pushing. Once we put every piece in, it's gonna start pushing everything together so you won't see the board, okay, at all. Now, I recommend cutting the raffia right after you put it in because as we start adding more of this, you'll see that um, it's gonna be hard to find where you need to cut your raffia. And the thick pieces, I just kind of pull apart to make it more straw looking or hay looking, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so freight, pull it apart and you can do it as thin or as thick as you want. And you're gonna do both sides. Now this is something you can do at the end of your wreath, but I just wanted you guys to see what I was doing before we start filling this all in. 
And I think three pieces is actually a perfect amount per, oh, there's a, per zip tie. Right? So we got a scarecrow-ish looking piece here. And it's super easy. It's actually quite therapeutic splitting these apart because it's such a simple thing and it keeps your mind busy that you don't really think of anything else but splitting the little pieces of raffia apart. Anyways, move on, Lori. Okay, so look what we have. So we got some um, burlap strands in here and we got some straw strands and we'll move them all apart. But for now, while we're building it, we'll just keep it like that. Yes, you get to be messy, messy, messy. All right, so this is where I'm not going to fray the pieces because I'm going to, you know, try to keep this in within at least a little bit of an hour. But I am going to roll my mesh exactly the same. And I'll keep it curled up because I'm, you know, later on I may think, oh, I want, you know, my burlap uh, frayed. I can just go and just fray what's um, exposed here. Not like that, but, you know. You can do it like that. Or you don't have to fray it at all. So I'll put my clothes pin on. And you'll notice if you got this kit, the cutters and the clothespins are not in this clip kit. So please, please read very carefully what kit comes with the clippers and stuff because there is, um, my clippers are back ordered. They've been back ordered for like six months now. So we are running really short of, um, clippers so there's only certain kits that will have clippers in it okay so again three pieces pull it out trim that one that's a super long one all right we're gonna go right beside put your mesh in put your raffia the center right in and come around. Again, I'm gonna keep it loose until I see that these are the same length. And we press, pull it tight, cut your zip tie. I'm going to cut my raffia. Thank you, Deborah. That is the best thing anybody could do to say thank you to anybody doing lives, anybody doing lives, is to share them, to float them, to sprinkle them, to even just your, your, your page. There may be a friend that's sitting there with nothing to do, and they see this on your page and they're thinking, oh, I'd like to make one. And there we go. All right, so... We can do this at the end, the shredding of it, um, but cut the, cut the pieces after you put them in. Look at this already, and I only have two pieces in this, right? Um, Aaron, the kit, this one is a kit right now. I had 300 of them when I posted yesterday. When I looked this morning, there was 100 left. So I do not know how many are left at the moment. So they go fast, my friends. If you see some one of the kits of ours that you absolutely love, I wouldn't wait to, to buy one because they do go super fast. And it's because I, I the details. Like this scarecrow kit was ready to go a long time ago, but I wanted raffia. I wanted you guys to have raffia, so I had to wait. For, the, for my raffia to come in. Because it's the little details. 
right? It's the little details. Like the raffia makes it so cute. And you do not have to be precise with your raffia, obviously. <laughs> You'll have some long pieces and you can just trim it. All righty. Put again. If you have a extra clothespin, you can actually just clothespin these out of the way so you can put your mesh and your raffia. Come around. The mesh is 21 inches, so I used the whole roll of poly jute because I'm only using, I'm not using both rows, I'm only using one row. And if you are a big Unique Decrease fan and you love making Unique Decrease, you know I like to use zip ties for everything. I just find it nicer looking. Um, and the zip tie gun really comes in handy. Um, you can find the link of the one I got on uniqueinthecreek.com under Lori's tool, favorite tools. And um, what it does is pulls and cuts your zip tie at the same time. Mine's really old. It's past, I think, three years or coming up to three years now. And it's a metal one. And it's awesome. I know it's full. That's why you, if you do the 21 inches. Now, when you do the calculations, you can actually do 22.5 inches. I, however, like to keep room for error in case I didn't get the full 360 inches. So you get 10 yards, which is 360 inches. Um, so I just round it down and I'll probably have like one extra piece of jute left, uh, the mesh left. Two, three, and then and this is what I'm talking about. When you're pulling out your raffia, keep it tied, but just pull out three loops. All right, and pull it straight out. He's adorable. I haven't even finished him yet. You haven't seen anything yet. This is a wonky piece, so we'll just tuck these long things in because really it's it, it's just straw. And the messier, the better. This is where uh, you don't have to be OCD because we want frays and we want uneven and we want messy. It's a scarecrow. Now you can see it's starting to get, you can see it's getting full. So make sure you cut these loops when you can. And then go back and split them. Tighten that sucker up and pull the zip tie. Let's let go of this. Look how cute already. Isn't that amazing? Super cute, but look at the back. Still nice and neat. Well, I'm glad I can be doing dishes with you, April. <laughs> So I will be editing this live. I will be editing it down um, for the tutorial. Uh, and the tutorial, edited tutorial, will be available on the YouTube channel, uh, our Unique in the Creek YouTube channel.
So again, if you wanted to add some, like a ribbon tail, you can add a ribbon tail in here as well. Okay, like I said, I'm keeping it simple and I'm gonna make him a cute, cute bow with my ribbons. And then you're, when you do that, you have lots of ribbon left to make more. And this wreath, my friends, is a huge, huge seller. It's a very big seller. So, and you can do it, and you can make it inexpensively, okay? I did just load, I think, 80 rolls of this jute poly mesh. So if you want to make more than one and just make your own hats, there is lots and lots of people that have made, oh my God, the cutest snowman or scarecrows on unique wreath creators. So if you like this kind of wreath, we do have a sister group called Unique Wreath Creators. And it's where all of you post what you've made with Unique in the Creek boards. And the scarecrow's coming in a lot. Of, there is a lot of people that make their own scarecrow hats because it, it's not hard. I, actually, I think I even have a burlap hat that I made quite a few years ago. I made a tutorial on, and that is on our, my YouTube channel. So again, three pieces of raffia. Dre. Hi, Tina Kelly. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, I'm my friend. This one's fun to do. There's not much thinking to it at all. And you, you can't really make a mistake because it's supposed to be messy. <laughs> the name of the group is Unique Wreath Creators. And it is a Fabulous group. Fabulous. There's about 22,000 people in that group. And it's a very positive group. It really is. And people share all their ideas. If they come up with something, something new, some people actually share and make take pictures of how exactly they did it. So you get lots in that group and it, it doesn't cost anything. Just answer. There's a few can't questions that you have to answer before joining. So if you could just answer the questions, I don't know why. I really love doing this. It, like I said, it's very therapeutic. I just want to do it all day long. Then I don't have to think about anything else except pulling apart raffia. But that's not going to happen. Continue on more. <laughs> So just to recap, I'm doing just a ruffle, but I have the ruffle. Usually I put it face down. This time I have it up because I want to see Frey. This is probably the only time you would want to see Frey. And Frey is not a person. Frey is all the strings <laughs> hanging down off the mesh. new board it's coming my friends it's coming I promise we just have a few things we have to work out before announcing anything so and I've given you guys many hints <laughs>
Hello, hello. Brenda, if you go to the my YouTube channel and you just go into the search on Unique in the Creek YouTube channel and just type in Scarecrow Hat, it'll come up. Or it's under, um, I believe it may be under the older tips and tricks. Ah. It may be sold out already, Eva. I had 300 of them yesterday. People stock the website, I'm telling you. They stock. <laughs> Literally, I think they keep refreshing just to see... <laughs> when we post things. But like I said, it is very easy to make your own. You can you can buy everything right now. You can pretty much buy everything that's on here. You don't have to use this ribbon. You can find a really cute other fall ribbon. so dry, parched, um, and make your own scarecrow hat, which I will probably do maybe next week. We'll see. And you don't even have to just use poly jute. You can add some blue mesh in here, or they have raffia that's like orange. You can put orange raffia in instead of the straw colored. Like, you can get really creative. Yeah, I only frayed the first piece of mesh because it is very messy and time consuming. And um, you can still see it. It does give it a nice look, um, but I just, on the live, I just don't have time. And I didn't have the patience <laughs> to redo it. So <laughs> I showed you guys how to do it. You'll be able to see it on the replay. So once you've got all these 16 pieces, then you're pretty much done the wreath. We're just gonna put a bow on him, attach his hat, and he's going to be good to go. So if you see pieces of string already hanging off, pull them. This is one time we give permission to fray your mesh. <laughs> the Alaska cruise, it was absolutely breathtaking and oh we are going to go on again i think next year uh, a longer one because uh i wanted to go to uh, a few different places that the boat cruise didn't go to but man i'm telling you if you ever want to do an alaskan cruise celebrity cruise line i've been on with them before and i've done three cruises with three different cruise lines in the past four months and I'm not bragging it just happened to be that way um, I have to tell you celebrity really really up their game it the food was absolutely phenomenal the captain when we went to the Hubbard glacier which is one of the biggest glaciers on the world in the world we had the most fantastic weather the captain got up closer than any cruise ship ever to the Hubbard Glacier. So we could literally hear ice and snow falling off the glacier. Uh, that's how close we were. And what he did, he, did a, he had the boat in a, a standard position and he did a 360 with the boat. It was like incredible, incredible. It was just, I, I just can't even say, you know, I've been on a lot of cruises and that was just 
phenomenal. Dave and I sat on our balcony a lot and just sat there with binoculars, um, ordered room service, because room service is included, and had lunch on our balcony while we were whale watching. We've seen uh, a bunch of pods of orcas. We've seen tons of humpback whales. We've seen um, stellar sea lions. We've seen harbor sea lions. We've seen all kinds of eagles, um, eagles nest. We just, the, 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 uh, the, um, Salmon, sorry, salmon um, are swimming back upwards, so they're all jumping out of the water. I'm telling you, it was just absolutely incredible. And I like I, I can't even say better things about the cruise line. Uh, they like I said, they really, really upped their game. I think I've been on three other celebrity cruises, and celebrity was never a bad cruise line to begin with but the cruise I went beforehand on Norwegian oh lord it, I, there is no name on the zip tie gun it's actually brandless really really poor um, marketing that is for sure um, the only thing I can offer you is there's the link for the one I'm using on my Lori's Favorite Tools on my website, uniqueinthecreek.com. Go to Lori's Favorite Tools, and it's there. I think it's like $15 or $16 now. It was the Celebrity Eclipse. And the cap, oh my gosh, the entertainment. The, the entertainment was just like mind-blowing. Uh, they had a naturalist on board. His name was Milos. And Milos would do a talk every morning at 10 a.m. in the theater um, about, about everything. Like about all the animals, about, you know, um, the, uh, astronomy, about sharks. It was just, oh my gosh, it was fabulous. It was just so fabulous. But I can't even say enough about the food. Holy crap, the food was so good. So, so good. Um, I was saying about Norwegian. I've been on a few Norwegian cruises. Norwegian. Norwegian, man. Norwegian, if you're listening, you need to step it up, my friends. The Norwegian cruise was horrible. Horrible. The food was disgusting. I hated the food. To get off the boat was an absolute nightmare. So when you were getting off to do your excursions, I don't know where they dropped the ball, but oh my gosh. No, I will never go again with Norwegian, never. I don't care how much the price is. <laughs> it was bad. And Royal Caribbean, well, Celebrity, funny enough, Celebrity is owned by Royal Caribbean. So Royal Caribbean already has high standards and that's all we'll sail with is Royal Caribbean or Celebrity. Royal, our Royal Caribbean cruise in April was fantastic as well. The food was amazing. The service was spectacular, but Norwegian man, whoo. And I feel bad because my friend Patty, that was her first cruise. So she thought it was great, which was awesome, because it was her first cruise and she didn't know, you know, she thought it was great. Um, but I really wish, I guess, she experienced like what we experienced on Celebrity. But, but then she would have, ex I guess it's a good thing because she would have expectations like me now. I sound like a snob, but I'm not. <laughs> Um, there's just certain expectations and it was all these cruises were just starting up after COVID, right? So I don't know if I should just give Norwegian a break because it was, I don't know. But anyways, fabulous trip and I would want to bring my family. 
my family needs to see what Dave and I saw the past two weeks on Rio. And the weather was beautiful. Like when you go to a Caribbean cruise, you can't really sit out on your deck because it's too freaking hot. We pretty much lived on our, our balcony. It was amazing. Good morning, Miss Blewett. Oh, really, Dean? Really? <laughs> so we're almost done here. I'm gabbing away. Sorry. Could have been finished if I was done gabbing. So that is all for really the trips for me this year. Except I have, you know, pinners. I am going to put to the pinners convention. Um, I will be speaking and actually doing a workshop. The pinners convention is September 30th to October 1st. It is in Fort Worth, Texas. No, I didn't see any bears except for the ones we saw in, um, in Vancouver that were at the, um, the rescue. However, we did go up to the top of, oh gosh, what mountain was it? Anyways, it was, uh, we took a gondola ride in, I think it was Icy Strait up to the top of the mountain where there was a, you could do a hike, um, a bear trail hike. So we went up and unfortunately, I didn't get this, but they couldn't, con they couldn't do the hike because there were bears on the trail. Now they obviously know a lot more than I know, but I'm thinking, okay, you advertise the hike to see bears, but you're shutting down the you're shutting down the walk the walk because there's bears. So I don't know. <laughs> we would have seen bears if we went on the hike, and then I probably would have, you know, crapped my pants for real. So like I said, they know things that we don't. <laughs> even used the outside made them even bigger by using this hole to the outside of the board could have did it even that way too and made the wreath even bigger but we'll push all this out of the way I like to put a when I'm finished the wreath before I go to bed I like to put a bowl in the center and have the bowl kind of and have all the mesh pushed up like this against the bowl that when you remove the bowl in the morning, the mesh stays like that. So you get to see more of the face. All right, we have three more. Three more. Now, when I do edit the tutorial, this part, like all this part where I was talking and everything, I will speed up. So when, you, when you're ready to go make this wreath and you need to rewatch the tutorial, you won't listen to all my, my rambling on.
Um, you don't really need to spray the wreath with anything. Um, because once you push it back, it will stay back. But like I said, if you have a bowl and you really want to see more of the image, you just put the bowl in. But um, if it's too close to the face that you wanted, like I said, you could use this hole to the outside of the board and do your ruffles and your, um, and your raffia. It will make it bigger and it will show more of the face. I actually think I like it just like this. And we have two more. We'll make a bow. See, I cut them at, oh no, I have one left. So I cut them at 21 inches, even though I could have at 22, I just happened to get a full 360 inches because I have one piece left. So I always err on the side of caution. Oh, that sounds nice, Virginia. I want to go to the Galapagos Islands. Yeah, until Dave found out how much it costs. So unless I become a gazillionaire one day, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so maybe I would love the next one to be Hawaii. Somebody might be at the door. Um, the next one I would love to be is Hawaii or... Um, over Europe, like Scotland, Ireland, something like that. Okay, we're getting tight in here because we have two, this is the second last piece. Did you greet whoever's at the door, Duchess? Did you get them? Or Amazon guy, hey, Duchess. It was probably just Amazon. Nothing special, right, Dutch? All right, last piece we're going to squish in here. No, Alaska was just, I have to bring my kids, my, I have to bring my family. They need to see the beauty of Alaska. And doing the Alaska cruise really gave me a different perception on what is happening with the climate. Um, because we got a lot of information about what's happening with the um, with the the climate and what's how it's affecting um, everyday life and life what it's going to be for our future you know our families our kids our grandkids later so it, that was a good big eye opener for me too and I was quite proud of us use that we use you know, recycled plastic that we use um, bags that can be um, reused again. Like, so I was quite proud of our company for what we actually do for the environment as well. Now I was conscious of it before, but now I'm really, really much more aware. It's just being educated a bit, a bit better. So, because it really is a thing. It really is a thing. So if you're just new to us, the boards are made with recycled plastic. They are recyclable. So you can, if you're done with it and you don't want to make another wreath, you can actually put it in the recycling bin. Alrighty. So you can go around and I won't do this on camera, but you can start separating the thick pieces if you want of your straw or your raffia. But we got, this is what we got so far. So we'll push it, start pushing it back. Isn't it cute? So you can, 
you can go around and if you want snip off some of the pieces however if it's a scarecrow i think i like some of the long pieces with the short pieces gives it a great scarecrow look um, and then separating the big pieces makes it even more wispy right Alrighty. So we're going to make a bow. I'm going to make a bow. We'll put his bow maybe down here and we're going to attach his hat like up here. Put his bow. So I'll have his hat probably off to the side. Maybe I'll put his bow off to the side. It's going to be so super cute. All right. So let's put him aside and make a bow. Just a simple, simple bow. I am gonna put some raffia in my bow because I do have a, quite a bit of raffia left over. So just an FYI, if you wanna add four pieces and make your scarecrow even more with straw, you can put more raffia into your pieces. I'll grab my bow maker because I just, Although I could probably, maybe I'll just do a simplified, a simple bow, a cheap bow, I call it. For those of you, maybe I will. For those of you that don't have a bow maker, let's make a, a cheater bow. I know Michelle hates when I make these, but some people don't have a, a um, bow maker. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon, ah, 20 inches. This will be for the tail. So this will be the tail of the bow. So we'll pinch it and it'll come down like this. Okay. And then with this ribbon, I'm only gonna, like I said, I just wanna make a simple bow. I think I'm just gonna make two loops. Let's see, what size? That looks good. So that is, 12, so I'm gonna cut a piece of this ribbon at 24 inches. Actually, I'll cut two pieces at 24 inches. Okay, so two pieces at 24 inches. Fold it in half. I can't make hand bows. I am not a bow maker. <laughs> never claim to be any kind of bow maker. I do make cheater bows because I used to teach classes all the time and a lot of people can't make hand bows so I would show them cheater bows. Okay, the hat, um, you can purchase the hat separately. We don't have any in stock, but um, you can, I, I think um, Craft Outlet might have some but I think I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own hat. Maybe I will. So what I'm, I forgot to explain this. So we're gonna half it right here and I'm going to take one edge and go uh, about half an inch over the half mark. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna take this side and I'll go layer it right over. I give it about a half inch or an inch. Give yourself some room here. We're going to be using a zip tie. Now you did get a pipe, a pipe cleaner. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So just about, uh, give yourself maybe an inch because you can glue it. So if you want it, if you have a hot glue gun, you can go ahead and put just a little bit of glue right on the center line there, still going over about an inch. And then you can put another little dollop of glue right there. This one, I'm not gonna put any glue because I want to show you how it works for both ways. Okay, so these, that one's done. I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange. Oh, Nadia has hats available in her shop. There you go, Nadia's Crafty Corner. She has scarecrow hats in her Etsy store. 
yeah, the scarecrow hats are very, very hard to find. Like I said, for the kits that I had made, I ordered these hats last two years ago. So they came in last year and I kept them for a year. So, okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with this orange. So I'll do about 20 inch of the orange. And I'm gonna make the loops of the orange a little bit smaller. So the two and a half inch we cut at 24. So these ones I'll cut at uh, 21. Why not? I'm gonna cut three. And of course, if you don't have, you can, if you have your measure buddy, you can definitely do this with your measure buddy, cutting your ribbons and stuff. Okay, so this one is our tail. Okay, so we'll do the same with these three pieces, fold it in half. So as you can see, you still have pretty much a full roll of ribbon if you're just going to make a bow. Over about an inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some raffia. Okay, so let's take, first ones I'm gonna do is the tails. And again, if you have a bow maker, it's probably easier on your bow maker, but if you don't have a bow maker, this is the cheater version, I call it. Okay, so the two tails, alrighty. Then I'm going to put the center. So when you when you scrunch it up in the center, both layers are in the center. Okay. So, but if you have glue, use some glue like this one. That way, it doesn't come apart. I'm just going to put that on there. That one slightly on there. Then the orange. Just kind of like that. All right, now I'm gonna take a zip tie. Oh, I gotta put, actually I'm gonna, I'll do this up and then I'll add some raffia in a sec. Actually, maybe it might be easier. Let's pull out some of this raffia. See what we can do with it. One more piece. Oh, I didn't pull it from the knot. Pull it from the loop. some raffia hanging down there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to slide a zip tie 
right underneath the whole thing, right down the center. Now you can do this with just the pipe cleaner, but I just find the zip tie, especially when you're doing a cheater bow like this, you want everything nice and tight and the zip ties will, the zip tie will keep everything tight. Come around. Okay, so you want, when you're putting it, just put it loose enough that you can make sure everything, all your ribbons are like the same length, just like that, okay? And now I'm gonna take the head of this zip tie and I'm going to be bringing it towards the back, just like that. And I'm going to take this pipe cleaner and put it right, slide it right underneath the zip tie, okay? And this is what we'll use to attach the, uh, it to our board. And then we're gonna pull this tight. Now I wanna make sure that I just, when I squish, when I tighten my bow, that the seams of the ribbon are going towards the table or flipped up, you can see it going towards you. And you're gonna give it, squeeze it and tighten at the same time. There we go. And we got us a cheater bow. Open up the loops once we get it onto the board. Okay, it's tight, 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 tight. Now we're gonna cut this off. And you won't see the zip tie once we start opening everything up. And we'll trim all that. Okay, let's clean this up again. So that's a cheater bowl. So if you do workshops or anything, you can teach people. Um, just like that, it's much easier than trying to teach them a hand bow. All right, let's get the bow on for our cuteness. And we'll put the hat on and we will be done. So you can put it right in the center. So if we flip the board over, Okay, right here is completely straight. Oh, actually we're gonna put a zip tie down and up the two holes here. Oh, put the zip tie facing the right way. So the zip tie flat end should be facing in between the two holes. Do it up a little bit and then we're gonna cut off the extra zip tie. And I also, the tails of the zip tie are also recyclable, so you can put them in your recycling containers. And you never know, some of these zip ties may be in the board, may, made within the board. Okay, so if you wanted to put your bow tie on straight, this is the exact center of the board, and you would just use these, any of these three holes to put your bow on. However, I'm gonna put my bow just a little to the side, so I'm gonna use these holes or these ones and then directly I'm going to put my hat directly opposite where my bow is that way we have the um, it's balanced if you want it balanced okay so I like to I'm going to put my bow to the right right here so you're going to take your pipe cleaners and we're going to dig down and you can see the the zip tie quite clearly we're going to go right over top of the zip tie with these with this pipe cleaner so just down the one hole for one and doing it off when it's off the uh, table is easier because you can see the hole and it's not hitting the table so you do one and then the second one, go through. Now I'll flip it over so you guys can see where I put it. Okay, so there's my center mark. I just put it to one to the left of me. Okay, and I'm just gonna 
pull just so I can feel some resistance and just give it a twist. And pull the tails down. Okay, you can dovetail those tails at the end of your bow. Just fold it over and from the folded side, you're gonna cut to the outside corner and get that nice V shape. You can roll your, your uh, tails, like you can do it however you want. You definitely don't have to do it like I did. And then start opening these. So pull out these raffia pieces. Again, we can shred them so it's more wispy. Okay, you're gonna open. Now don't pull too hard. This is the only thing when you're using the um, cheat method. You just wanna open it and kind of, because don't forget it's not, unless you glued it, if it's not glued, if you tug too hard, it's going to, um, the pieces that overlapped are going to come out of the zip tie. So you don't have to yank. We only have two pieces here. Just open them up. And then we're going to do the th three orange ones. Just open them up. Just like that. Alrighty. And if the non Bended strands of raffia will go down for tails. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. Just open them up. And again, you can use your bow maker and make a more elaborate bow. You can make even a more simpler bow than I did. You could just use one. If you just love the sunflower and you don't like the orange on top of it, just use the sunflower and raffia. Thanks for all the stars and everything, or in the hearts and the, th the likes and everything. Thanks everybody. It's pretty simple, isn't it? And it's absolutely adorable. Wait till I get that hat on. Okay, so I have some really, really long pieces of raffia here. I'm just gonna sniff them. We don't need too long of pieces. Alrighty, there's our cute little bow. And now we are going to put, I keep getting stuck on my moose here. And I'm going to now go opposite with the hat. Now, like I said, the hat, it used to have two wires on the bottom and one on the top. We're not gonna use the top wires. First, you're gonna cut off this tag and everything. Definitely not using the top wires. So I'm just gonna snip them off. Now, this is only felt and um, batting. It is very, very lightweight. And like I said, I'm gonna have my hat going kind of kitty corner to the uh, scarecrow, uh, to the bow. So I think what I'm gonna do is, shoot, I wish I didn't cut these. Just make two little snips in the back of this. I could even use a zip tie. And I'm gonna feed just a pipe cleaner right through the center. I'm not even gonna bother with this. This might be tricky, but we'll see. I could just glue it, I could use a cable mount. I'm trying to use stuff people would have at home. Do I 
tweezers here. And it, I know my mousse is a, uh, well, this is tricky because my pipe cleaner is bending in there. Oh, 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 wait, I think I almost, yay, it worked. There we go. I'm not even, I'm, I'm cutting these off. Perfect. We just want just one piece that we can attach because then we'll use some hot glue under everything else. I'm not fussing with those. And it's much easier if you have your pipe cleaner right in the center and then you put your hat. I can put it directly across. So there's the bow. I'm gonna put my hat right there. Yeah, I have yarn needles and I was selling yarn needles too. They all sold out. And now I don't remember where I put my yarn needle when I moved it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going down the holes right over top of that zip tie. So down one, down the other. Oh, much easier. Okay, and flip it over and I'll show you. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. I'm such a goober. Oh, no, I didn't. So there's the center. I should have put it here, but I put them here. Let me see how it looks. So that's really to the side. So if you like it really to the side, you can leave it there, but I'm going to move it. I just wanted it askew a little bit. So I'm just going to the next hole. There we go. Okay, I'm just pulling it down until I feel like the resistance against the mesh. There we go. So there's the bow and kitty corner is the hat. We're going to cut the hat. We're gonna take these pipe cleaners and we're gonna put them down the hole so there's nothing to scratch the door and it's nice and neat still. Same with the bow. The bow, I'm happy where it is. There we go. So we still have a nice neat back and you all know to put your sticker or, or if you're selling it, your sticker or your business card on the back so they can come and get the snowman one when they're finished all. Fix our bow again. And then we can, again, move this back. Um, I'm gonna pop a little bit of hot glue. First, let me look at it before I commit. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Look at him. Isn't he cute? It'll look so cute on my door. But I'm gonna, I, the hat, I'm happy where the hat is. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of hot glue just there and kind of set it down. So it's attached with, with the pipe cleaner and as well with a little bit of hot glue. So right there and then up top a little bit. There we go. Now, if you want to get even more fancy, you could take a piece of the ribbon, this cute ribbon, cut a square. You could even, you know, make your own little patch to match the ribbon. Maybe not, not with this one. Does it, it, it may clash with the 
because it's already got a sunflower on it. But I just thought if you're using another color in there or something, you could put another color just cutting with ribbon. Or if you're using, um, if you're making your own hat, you can use ribbon, ribbon pieces to make your little patches. Okay. And we're done. We are done. Super cute. This is 2022 UITC Scarecrow. Keep an eye out for UITC 2022 Snowman coming soon to a website near you. <laughs> so again, you have a ton of ribbon left over, uh, both colors. You will have many zip ties left over because really we only used 16, 17, 18, 18 zip ties and you get a pack of 100 and you got a little bit of raffia left over you can use it in another project or you can add more but that's it that's it thank you virgin thank you everybody i think he turned out quite cute and as you can see sometimes little goes a long way. So I did not jam pack this with ribbons. I don't have to worry about fixing ribbon tails because it drives me nuts and everything. Just added a cute little bow, a hat, and all this stuff. It can fray as much as it wants. <laughs> and we have a cute scarecrow. Alrighty, if you loved this, make sure you tell your friends. I am going to edit this video. Um, and it will go on to our YouTube channel. It will go under the character board. So if you're looking for the video again, it'll be under the character board or it will be under wreath kits. Um, I'm not sure if there's any of the kits left, but um, if you grabbed one, you will find the video under kits as well. Um, and there's a few other kits on there too, on our website, if you didn't notice. Um, I, there was a snowman one on there. I think that's sold out already too. So I will be doing that sometime in the next few days as well. Okay, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, thanks for joining me. And again, thanks for um, sh sharing and sprinkling our page because, you know, we'd like to know, we'd like a lot of people to know that we're out there. And even if they're not wanting to do it for a business, it's very therapeutic to make something with your hands and to create with your hands and brain. And we want people to know it's not as hard as you think, especially with the unique and the creek, right? Okay, guys, I will talk.